Mining companies remain in the headlines and for all the wrong reasons. Harmony Gold has issued a warning to striking miners at its Kusaletu mine to return to work on Thursday morning or face dismissal. Goldfields workers at its KDC East operations are yet to return to work despite the company issuing an ultimatum for the striking employees to resume work or face dismissal. And Royal Buffer King Platinum says its latest quarterly production dipped by 1% showing the effects of a three-day wildcat strike. Peter Major is a mining analyst from KD's Corporate Solutions. He gives us a perspective on the sector. Hello, Peter. Hi, Erica. So, Peter, have we, have we evolved from where we were a week or two weeks ago? Yeah, I think we have because we have some people working now who weren't working before. And that's positive. As long as we're getting more people to work and not losing additional people. So, I, I think it is three steps forward, two steps back, but this is on the labor front. If you say, is the mining industry making a turn? No, it's not making a turn at all. Commodity prices are continuing to drift down, costs are continuing to go up, and even the miners who've gone back to work are taking a long time to get, uh, what do we say, integrated into the system. So I think even Impala, they say, is only running at 80, 85% of full production, and when was it on strike? Six months ago. Peter, my, my impression, but help me here, it might be sort of a naive interpretation. Could it be that the, the mine, mine bosses are walking a bit of a political and economic tightrope? Should, are they taking the right approach by being tough and giving deadlines and if people don't meet those deadlines, firing them? Or should, they, should there be a more sort of, uh, sort of uh, reciprocal uh, approach to the situation? I honestly believe the mining companies are walking a tightrope that has landmines strung along it, and they've got a, a chair on their shoulders with a couple different people fighting on that chair. So yeah, I don't think the mining companies have ever had it this hard. They don't know what they can count on. They don't know what they can plan on. Um, going back, repeat the rest of your question. Sorry? I'm just asking if, if this is the right approach, being tough as we've seen some of the mining oh. bosses being and firing workers. Look, you tell me what the right approach is. Um, I've, I've seen the mining companies try everything. And I don't like to hear the word demands, which the laborers always like to use. I don't like to hear the word ultimatum, which the mining companies always use. But it shows how aggravations and frustrations are, are overwhelming common sense here. But what have the mining companies not tried? And, and you keep setting deadlines and you keep moving them. I think there's way too much talk. I, I think we need less rhetoric, simpler talk to say, guys, we're going to start operations next week. Anybody who wants to work, please be there. Uh, we're going to start it whether you're there or not, and we're going to size the operations according to who's there. And let the guys just assume they don't have a job. Let them find out over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, they actually don't have a job because things have been downsized. And believe me, actions travel fast like lightning bolts, but to keep setting deadlines I think the deadlines aren't taken any more serious by the workers than they are by the unions, the government, or the investors anymore. Peter, question uh, from me. What, what do you think the long-term implications are as far as capital allocation is concerned? What do companies like Billiton and Anglas do if they're looking at their 10-year plans? Well, that's been real simple. Billiton's the world's largest mining company. I think Volley is the third, second largest. Rio Tinto is probably the third. I don't know if any of those three have put one penny into this country in the last year. I'm not even sure if they put any money into this country the year before. So if you got the three largest mining companies, and look at what they have been spending. I think Billiton spent $22 billion on CAPEX. I'll bet Volley and Rio are pushing 20 each. So there's 50, $60 billion these three companies have spent in the world on CAPEX, I'm not sure one cent has come to this country in the last two years. So you can extrapolate that, that trend. They're gonna run down the assets they've got here with, with minimal injection of CAPEX. They're just gonna run them for what they can get out of them. Peter Wainia, when you look at what's happening I now, and, and you spoke about this earlier on, the unions are now supporting the miners, but the miners who aren't members of the union or are members of the union went on, the, on an illegal strike, but now uh, Kusatu to try and gain some more credence, credence with the workers are now almost supporting them. 
Um, the mine management just says, listen, you don't come to work, we're going to fire you. The government doesn't know which side to support. So we, we caught in this, I don't know, vicious circle. Uh, is there any resolution that we can get out of this? Will level heads prevail and say, right, chaps, now this is not doing anyone any good or are we just in chaos? I think we're in chaos. I don't see an easy way out because I think there's been a serious breakdown in the rule of law, law of order, respect for the rule of law. I, I think there's been a complete breakdown, uh, Wayne, and, and by letting illegal strikes advance to where they are over the last five or six years, the miners, they don't know what right and wrong is anymore. They don't know who to trust. They don't trust their own union, who hasn't done a bad job for them. They don't trust their government, who I don't think is done as good as the union. They don't trust management, who they don't see any difference. So yeah, it's, it, it's chaotic out there. And, and who's going to draw a line in the sand? We've got to find a line that all four parties kind of agree on. And, and I thought we had a start when President Zuma said last week, there's going to be no more renegotiating any signed contracts. But he's got to follow that up with action. And he's got to have the mining companies agree on that. He's got to have labor representatives agree. If you get three out of four agree, the fourth will come in. Peter, briefly in closing, so what does this all mean financially? Would you be buying gold stocks now? Would you be buying platinum stocks now? I won't. And, and you know, I, I was born in mining. I'll die in mining. It's always the majority of my portfolio. I'm sitting on the sidelines, and, and I'm watching more experienced people than me sitting on the sidelines because I have to believe this thing is bottomed, and I see blue sky and daylight that means it's going to turn up, and I don't see it yet.